降落，降落，降落，降落。This Shabbat, our community faced a challenge. Even though the new stay-at-home orders, our synagogue service was permitted, we've decided to stop for the time being. The decision to close reflects a recognition that the health and well-being, not just our members but the entire Toronto community, must be placed in the highest regard. Yet it was not an easy decision. For months now, we've had at least a minion of ten people present in person on Shabbat morning, allowing us to live stream those at home a full and traditional service, a service with Torah. With kedusha, with baruchu, and with the kaddish, we're a Beit Knesset, a house of gathering, and it's been a blessing each week to walk in on Shabbat mornings and see some of our community face to face, even with a mask, even socially distant. It's been a blessing. I want to clarify in advance what I'm about to say. I don't think that the kaddish is the only reason to come to shul or the most important. Yet speaking for myself, at least, it was the hardest reason to choose to close. These past couple of months, Shabbat morning has been the last opportunity for some of our congregants to recite the words of the Mourners' Kaddish with a minion. I know how much it means to those of you who recite it, whether with us in person or virtually with our minion at home. I know the comfort the Kaddish brings. There is something special about these words. It was a difficult choice to take that experience away. Nevertheless, out of a concern for our members and their well-being, their health. Their lives, closing our doors until it's safe to reopen, is in fact what is best for our community. Still, though, I know that for many watching this sermon, it'll be difficult not having the opportunity to recite the words of Kaddish with your community. So, in light of that, this Shabbat, I want to speak to you a bit about the Kaddish, about its history and its meaning. While I usually record these videos in our sanctuary, this Shabbat I thought our chapel was more appropriate. It's here, after all, the place that, for decades, countless members of Beth Tikva have gathered and recited the words of Kaddish to honor a loved one, during Shiva, during Shloshim, or during the full year for a parent, day after day, morning and night. It's here that so many of you have come diligently on your sites to recall the memory of those you've lost. The Kaddish is written in Aramaic, while it's based on the vision of the prophet Ezekiel from the Bible. It was actually written over a millennia later. While today, when most people think of the Kaddish, they think of the Mourners' Kaddish. It's actually only one of the various forms of the prayer. In fact, the Mourners' Kaddish wasn't even the first form, the primary one. If you look at the words themselves, there's no mention of death or loss. There's no mention of remembering or memorializing a loved one. The Kaddish is about praising God, sanctifying God's name. Initially, it was recited after a public Torah study. In fact, the earliest mention in Jewish sources of Kaddish as a prayer for mourners isn't found until the 13th century. It begs the question: What did Jews do for over a thousand years when they lost someone they loved? Without the Kaddish, how did they honor them? How did they remember their loved one? This is where the question gets tricky. We have to ask: What is the purpose of reciting the Kaddish for someone we've lost? Most, I think, would answer that it gives them as mourners comfort. It's a sign of respect, a sign of honor for a family member. There are many, many more reasons I imagine that those of you who have recited Kaddish for a loved one might offer. The initial sources, though, in the Mourner's Kaddish are actually very different. They offer a theology I'm not sure that many in our community would relate to. The earliest sources of the Mourner's Kaddish attribute it to a story of Rabbi Akiva. Once he was walking in a cemetery, and he came across a man who was naked. Black as coal and covered in thorns, Rabbi Akiva stopped to ask him who he was. The man replied that he had died, and he had been a wicked person in life, a crooked tax collector. He preyed on the poor, and now in death he was being punished with eternal torment. Each day he would go out and chop trees, collect the wood, the very wood that was used to burn him. Rabbi Akiva asked him, "Is there any way to stop the punishment?" The man replied that if only his son would stand before the congregation and recite the words "Yehei Shmei Rabba Mevorach," may God's great name be blessed, then he would be released from his punishment. Rabbi Akiva eventually finds the man's son, 
And after much effort, he eventually gets him to recite these words and release his father. It's a rather gruesome story. I imagine that when most of us come to this room, to synagogue, to recite the words, we're not thinking about that. And yet, interestingly, even if it's fallen out of our communal consciousness, it still impacts our tradition today. The custom to only say Kaddish for 11 months for parents, it comes from a belief that only the most wicked would be punished for a full year. If we were to recite Kaddish for 12 months for a parent, it would be insulting. It would insinuate that they had been so wicked they need the full 12 months. So how did that become what we do today? The answer, I think, is fairly simple. People found comfort in the practice. For centuries, those who said these words found meaning and consolation in them and in the community that they said them with. In fact, when one looks even deeper, it seems that this story and its reasons are more likely a justification after the fact for a practice that was already happening rather than its origins. Evelyn Garfield, a phenomenal Jewish educator and psychologist, wrote a book on Jewish liturgy. And in it, she traces how the custom of Mourner's Kaddish likely developed. There was another custom that comes from the Midrash. It's the custom that a son would honor his father by participating in a discussion of Torah study. And in doing this, he would teach what his father had taught him. Others then would see how much the son knew and imagine that his father must have been a great man, a wise man to teach him all that. Remember, initially the Kaddish was recited after a public Torah study. So a mourner would attend the study, participate, and recite the Kaddish afterwards. Over time, Garfield suggests that these two customs combined and mixed together, forming a new custom, the custom of reciting Kaddish for the deceased. This seems likely given that the earliest versions of the story of Rabbi Akiva, the story I mentioned before, don't even contain the part about Kaddish. Instead, in these stories, to release the man from his punishment, his son is taught to perform various mitzvot. This brings us back to the first question. What did Jews do to honor someone they lost before there was a mourner's Kaddish? The answer is they studied Torah. They performed mitzvot. The Kaddish is a sanctification of God's name, a public declaration of God's glory. It's about making God known to the world. In essence, this is what all of Judaism is about. In our Parsha this week, God reveals God's self to Moses, saying, I am the Lord, Ba'er el Avraham, Ba'el Yitzach, Ba'el Yaakov. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. God in our Parsha is revealed now to Moses, who in turn will make God known to the Israelites, and they then are given the task of making God known to the world. And that task is the essence of what it means to be Jewish to reveal God's presence, to make God known. It was a difficult decision to stop meeting in person, knowing that for many it would prevent them from the opportunity to recite Kaddish. There are other synagogues that in light of the difficult times we are in have permitted exceptions to halakha that they otherwise would probably not have. The Committee of Jewish Law and Standards, the halakhic body of the conservative movement has done the same. I understand that different communities, different rabbis have to do what is right for them. There's no one correct answer to any halakha question. There's no one right way to be Jewish. There are, after all, 70 faces of Torah. The decision, though, to permit reciting Kaddish without a physical minion, it comes from a place of care and concern. It stems from a recognition of the comfort that these words give those among us who have suffered loss. Yet still, I fear that as a movement, we've missed an opportunity to educate. We've missed an opportunity to teach that there are other ways to remember someone. There are other paths our tradition offers us to find comfort and consolation. The Kaddish, a recitation of words proclaiming God's glory, is just one of the ways to do this. It is also just one of the ways to honor someone we've loved and lost. God's name is sanctified when we study Torah. And we study the wisdom of our tradition. Wisdom that has been handed down generation to generation through the ages. We not only sanctify God, but we honor those who have passed these teachings to us. We light Shabbat candles, give tzedakah, pray, or observe any of the other mitzvot. We reveal God in the world. When we do these acts, we honor those who taught them to us. Those who kept and passed down these practices throughout the ages. As I mentioned before, the story of Rabbi Akiva is likely a story written after the fact, 
a justification for this custom that becomes so popular amongst the people rather than its true origins. You might be surprised further to learn that there are rabbis throughout Jewish history that have tried to stop the practice of mourner's Kaddish. They've tried to end it because it really had no traditional basis. I mention this not to dissuade anyone from reciting Kaddish. I know how much comfort it brings to those who do. Instead, I hope to offer comfort to those who are unable to do it at this time, unable to recite those words with a minion, and to perhaps those who don't connect with this custom. This Shabbat, our Parsha reminds us, the essence of Judaism is the same as the essence of Kaddish, to sanctify God, to reveal God's presence in the world. This Shabbat, may our deeds not only sanctify God's name, but honor those who have come before us, those who have passed down their knowledge of the Holy One to us from generation to generation, those who have entrusted us with this sacred task. Shabbat Shalom.